I started using glue again. So rest in peace, my edges in the next like three to six business days. And the reason why is because I saw a woman with a real thick NOLA accent who was saying, girl, if you use this glue, <laughs> you use this here glue, <laughs> you can keep your hair on for two weeks. It's not going nowhere. Now, she said it was waterproof. I've not tested that. But it's on here. I'm not gonna recommend it until I see if I still got my edges. <laughs> and also whether or not it's waterproof, I haven't tried it again. She said it's sweat proof and waterproof. We'll see, but so far, my hair, it don't move. Hello, it's Kendall here. New around here, welcome. Not new around here, what is up, home skillet biscuit. Happy Saturday. Don't know what Saturday is, it's generally when I do something on my channel called Bad Movies in a Beat, the series on my channel where I talk about bad movies while putting my makeup on. And uh, since last week's episode was so rough, I wanted to watch something stupid, but not nearly as bad as that. So we're going to Passion Flicks. I can always depend on them to make some quality C minus romantic story with all the tropes I need to ignore the fact that I watched whatever the hell that was last week because I need to know what peace is because I haven't had it in so long. <laughs> Before we get into that, you know the drill. Ad roll Kenny, thank you. Hello everyone, this is Admiral Kenny and today's video is sponsored by Scentbird. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service. I've taken five takes to do that. That's just gonna have to do it. <laughs> that allows you to try a designer scent or more than one if you so choose for just $17 a month. I said it before, I am quite particular when it comes to scents. So I like the idea of being able to try a 30 day supply instead of committing to the full bottle. Not to mention they have an online quiz that allows you to get matched up with fragrances that Scentbird thinks that you'll really enjoy based off of a few simple questions. Get fragrances from designer brands like Prada, Gucci, Versace, or from niche brands like Confessions of a Rebel, DS and Durga. They have perfumes, colognes, and unisex options personally. I will wear anything. I don't care who it's supposed to be for. If it smells good, it smells good. I got Creed Activist for her. I'm starting off with my least favorite. It smells very strongly of sandalwood, even though it's one of the later notes, but it's green apple, bergamot, rose, sandalwood, and sweet peach. It's definitely not very sweet. Argue leaning more masculine. I'm more of a sweet girl. And that one um, smells like a very fancy closet. Mare Peony Silk. This is Peony Jasmine and Rose. I like it. I think this one's a bit simple. I feel like I would use this as a mix-in with another fragrance. Next we have Ex Nihilo Fleur Narcotique. Bergamot, lychee, peony, transparent wood, and musk. This smells like a really good boba shell. <laughs> the ones where they have the really good desserts. <laughs> I think it's the lychee and wood combination. <laughs> I don't know, it smells very good. And then last but not least, my favorite of all of these, and Russet must have liked it too, cause she got to the card. <laughs> this is Silage House of Whispers of Truth with grapefruit, bergamot, orange, rose, and jasmine, which looking at those notes, I wouldn't think that I like it. I love this. <laughs> Oh, it smells, <laughs> it smells so good. There's something so fruity and citrusy. I'm not usually often think of citrus as like a scent that I go towards in perfume, but I love this. So if you would like to check out Scentbird, feel free to click on the link down below or scan this here QR code. The brands are getting fancy. And use my code Kenny to get 55% off your first month at Scentbird. That's only about $8 for your first month, so steal if you ask me. Big thanks again to Scentbird for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get on to the debauchery. My nails look so bad because I got into nail art videos. Those like really involved like poly gel, people making sculptures for their nails. I believed in myself way too much <laughs> and I thought I could do it too. And now my natural nails are so thin. I went to take a bath in my hands. I could feel the water through my nails. <laughs> Also, I be taking off acrylics and poly gels with my teeth. If you needed to know um, how I'm doing, that's mentally where I'm at. Okay. <laughs> so again, if you didn't see last week, we talked about that movie I've been looking for since Thanksgiving. I finally found it, my father, myself. The man who takes in his dead lover's son. Girl, just watch the video. I, <laughs> Cause I, I'm, I can't. Again, I won't again. With that said, it was one of my favorite bad moves in a beat I've done in recent memory. So I think you'll like that if for no other reason than the yucks and make my pain worth it, okay? So if you haven't checked that out, you can check it out up above 
or you can check it out in the bad movies in a beat playlist. But yeah, speaking of selling my mental health for content, um, passion flicks, we're back there <laughs> this week. If you are unfamiliar with my channel and unfamiliar with this series or unfamiliar with how passion flicks feeds into this series, if you will, passion flicks is an online streaming service for romance, particularly romance film adaptations that come from romance books and they're awful. Think like Lifetime, but slightly more sexually explicit and they're able to say curse words and show titties. Think the most tropey, poorly acted, non-sexy, sexy movies that you've ever seen and think about how there's a whole service devoted just to that. And if you're like me, a lover of garbage, it's a gold mine. So every once in a while I like to pop in, see what they have, because I know much like a 2B, there will always have something that will feed particularly my masochism. So, and being that I need a more like predictable film <laughs> than last week, somewhat of a palate cleanser. I thought that uh, it would be time to see what they have over there again. Originally, I was gonna talk about another good movie. I wanted to talk about Talk To Me. I've seen it twice. I wanna see it a third time. I want the hand. Apparently they're gonna sell it. I want the hand. I'm gonna buy the hand. I don't know where I'm gonna put it, but I will own that hand if I have any say in it. Very good movie. I'll probably do a video on it when it's on streaming though, so people can see it more easily because I don't wanna spoil it. I want people to see it first. So if you've been asking yourself, should I go see Talk To Me? If you like horror movies and you can stomach horror movies, I would go see it in theaters because of the sound design is just incredible. I don't wanna overhype it, um, but there are parts that are very, very, uh, whoa, shit. <laughs> when I was going in to see it the second time, I went to see it at like 11.30 in the morning and uh, the guy that was giving me my ticket, he was like, oh, talk to me. At least it's daytime. <laughs> Little did he know this is my second time going to see it for leisure. <laughs> it is very good in my opinion. I don't wanna overhype it, but I think it's my favorite horror movie of this year. I had just done like a good movie not too long ago. I was talking about Misery. If you haven't seen that video, I love that movie. So I was like, eh, we don't need to talk about another good movie yet. So instead, again, passion flicks. And while I was on there, I saw a film called Wait With Me, which is one of their newer films that have come out. I did consider watching, there's two Gabriel's Inferno movies that I haven't done videos on yet, and I've watched both of them. They just shouldn't keep making film anymore because there's nothing happening. So I don't know. For those of you that have been wanting me to like, hey, are you gonna update? There's nothing to say. There's nothing to say. They got married. But Wait With Me seems to be like a standalone romantic comedy of sorts. That is an adaptation from a novel of the same name about a woman named Kate, who is a best-selling erotic novelist who falls in love with a very hot, both in the sense that he's attractive and in the sense that he is constantly sweating, mechanic by the name of Miles. Nothing can be simple, can it? They both have a bunch of relationship trauma and she is afraid that he won't accept her as an erotica novelist and he's afraid that she'll cheat on him. And of course they spend the whole movie fighting their feelings for each other and fighting circumstances and yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. Again, no matter how bad it gets, it cannot be any worse than last week. Let's go, <laughs> I, I will take it. It's, you know, not too complicated. You don't have to think that much. None of the outcomes are particularly shocking. It's great, <laughs> just give me freedom. Without further ado, this is Wait With Me, whatever year it came out, I think 2023. So the movie opens with our main character, Kate Smith. She has a almost comedically ordinary name because she is an ordinary girl. But for people outside of her inner circle, she lives a bit of a secret life where she is an erotic novelist. She writes under the pen name Mercedes Lee Love Letter. But since the release of her last book, which did quite well, Kate seems to be suffering from a bit of writer's block. And the only place that she's found that she's able to alleviate that writer's block is to go to a local tire an automotive repair shop called Tire Depot. Only when she is in their like lobby area eating their free cookies, is she able to really hone in and focus on her new story. But as you can imagine, the owners of this automotive repair store are probably not great with her loitering. Therefore, she's constantly finding new ways to make an excuse for why she has to go back. She's borrowing friends' cars. She's, um, you know, hey, do you need an oil change? You want me to take your car in for an oil change? She's, she's going to neighbors like, hey, you want me to go get your car oil change? <laughs> like, 
just so she has an excuse to be in their lobby. Something about this eye look makes me feel like Superman slash I live for the applause, 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 live for the applause, applause, live for the applause, applause, live for the way that you scream and cheer for me. The applause, applause, the applause. There was a remix of that song that I fucking loved in college. Let me see if I can find it. I always get distracted. If you notice in any particular week that I am more distracted than usual, I'm probably on that wonderful time of the month. I'm crying over nothing. I feel this intangible, inescapable feeling of existential dread and I could suck a watermelon through a straw. Must be coming up, must be shark week. <laughs> oh, I brought that up to say I am I also get a bit scatterbrained as well. So any week that I'm particularly, uh, all over the place, that's probably what's happening. Anyway, the movie. Um, <laughs> so yes, the only place that she can find uh, inspiration is in the lobby of the Tire Depot. And there she sits down, she writes, she eats their cookies and drinks their coffee. She has a great time and she's able to get some work done. She comes so often that the woman who bakes the cookies for the establishment, she's a nice old lady named Betty who is like, hey, I recognize you. And she's like, oh, maybe you read one of my books. And she's like, no, were they like Christian romance? Were they Amish? And she's like, no. <laughs> Kate ends up saying to her like, hey, I'm here as a stakeout for corporate. We've heard complaints, you know, nothing with you though, you're great, but we're just seeing what's going on. So I've been here a bit. And she's like, oh, okay, well do your job. Even though she's just a freeloader eating all the cookies. With that said, she does feel bad about the freeloading. She's like, I don't know what to do. I had to lie to an old lady. Holy shit, this site looks so bad, but luckily you guys are so far away that you can't really tell, but it looks awful. <laughs> Rest assured, it looks bad. And though she feels bad lying to the old lady who, now that I think about it, I don't know why she doesn't remember her considering she has incredibly distinctive red hair. She feels bad lying to the old lady, but not enough to stop uh, lying to the old lady. Goes to her friend's house who lives next door. His name is Dean. And she's like, hey, you need an oil chain? I'm fine. Stop taking people's cars to freeload at their place. He's like, have you ever considered um, finding a back entrance? which is more reasonable for some reason than than what she was doing before. Breaking and entering, <laughs> like, yeah, that's, that's passion flicks. I'm not gonna overthink it. And she's like, wow, what a fantastic idea. So she's gonna go do just that, break into the establishment through the back. And when she does that, that is when she runs into the hunky, and again, perpetually sweaty mechanic, Miles. Literally, she runs into him like, physically falls down, drops her computer, everything. And thus begins all the things that you expect from a cheesy romance. We got the flirting, the corny banter. She says to him that he has book boyfriend arms and he's like, what does that mean? Oh, the arms of a man that we can only hope exists in real life, but probably doesn't. He exists only in the imagination of women who read romantic novels. She then alludes to being her writer herself. And she's like, I get why you wouldn't understand. You're not my demo. I have not decided whether or not that was a good line or not. I'm leaning towards no, but I could also see it being in real life being kind of cute. Like, oh, well, you're not my demographic. So like if you're an author, I give it a two out of 10. Thus begins their attraction. But it would seem that more than just Dean think that uh, Kate's whole staking out a tire depot is strange. So another one of her friends, Lindsay, comes to chastise her about that as well. She's like, I know they're gonna get you for loitering. You're eating all their cookies. You're not buying any services at some point. Like, come on. She's like, I need to follow the vibe. Writer's block, I need to follow the vibe. And the vibe is at Tire Depot. Like how else am I gonna write my next book, pay for this beautiful townhouse that I'm staying in that she so happens to share with her ex. It would seem that said ex is gone for the summer, so we won't be seeing much of him. I wanna be able to get him 
out of my life and I wanna be able to own this place and not move, you know, I need to write my book. So Tire Depot it is. But it would seem that for the summer, she's gonna live by herself happily. And when he comes back at the end of the summer, she's gonna kick him out officially, you know, really be able to live her life post this relationship. Just then she gets a letter from Tire Depot with an invoice demanding that she pay for all those. My windows are definitely open in my car and it's about to rain. Excuse me. And the amount of times I've had a flooded car is more than one, more than zero. Crisis averted. Okay. But yeah, she has an invoice demanding that she pay for all them cookies she's been eating while she's been freeloading. But because it says an invoice for Danishes as well, which she's never been able to get her hands on, something about that lets her know, ah, this is probably from Dean playing a trick on us. So they go over to Dean's house. He's like, I was trying to get you to stop going to Dire Depot because I've told you, you can come to my co-working space. And she's like, again, there's a particular mojo at the Tiger Depot. Also during this interaction, we can tell that there's a bit of a flirtatiousness between Dean and Kate. Something that she seems to not quite pick up on, but we of course in the audience can tell. She's probably just thinking like, oh, he's just flirtatious. That's just his personality. It's probably a Libra. So she's back at Tire Depot again. And while she's there, another friend who apparently isn't Lindsay. And I was very confused. I was like, did they recast her? They don't introduce her. They don't say nothing. It's just another friend of hers, another woman, orders a bunch of pizzas to go to the Tire Depot so that they can call out her pin name, which is, you know, a bit embarrassing for her. Oh, I'm cramping. Oh, I'm cramping. <sighs> okay. Later, Miles comes out, recognizes the pretty redhead that's always in their lobby. <laughs> she lies and tells him that her name is Mercedes. Now, I did not understand why she did this. I assume in the book, they probably explained this like difference, this dichotomy between normal old Kate and this like alter ego she has as Mercedes love letter, love, Lee, love, blah, 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 blah. In interacting with this guy, she wants to play the cool girl, the girl that's just fearless. I can love him and leave him type energy. Also because he's a mechanic, I guess they're supposed to be like, oh yeah, mechanic. I'm sure he like bitches named after cars. Mm, another crap. I'm good. Oh. I'm good. So this is the beginning. She wants to interact with this man as her alter ego, Mercedes. Get to know him, be a femme fatale, be the cool girl that she is able to be in her books, but seemingly isn't able to hone in on uh, in real life. Later, Miles hangs out with his friend who also works at the shop. And he's like, hey, did you see the sexy redhead that was out in the lobby? Have you seen her? And this bleeds into a conversation about Miles's ex, which, Damn, me trying to talk about somebody else, hey. The friend is like, man, that was your longtime sweetheart. You don't just like get over that super quickly. I understand if you still like working through that. They never say how long ago it was that he broke up with this ex. Maybe it was relatively recently, given how everyone's like saying, are you concerned about that? At least Semi recently had a pretty serious breakup, but he insists that he's over it and he simply wants to move on. And have you seen the hot redhead? <laughs> so when he goes back to work next day, the hot redhead Mercedes, quote unquote, is back. He's quick to say hello. There she faints, which threw me off. I was like, what the hell? She's been feeling bad for eating all the cookies and so she hasn't eaten. She just, she, just, she that was what her sustenance was for most of the day. And so if she's not eating the cookies, then she's not eating. So she passes out. She goes on this whole like tear ridden rant about how the cookies are so good. And I hope people care about the old lady that makes them. I hope people in her life appreciate her. She start crying. This is all because she's hungry. Instead of getting hangry, she gets amongry, emotionally hungry. And so he takes her to go get food. He gets turned on by the sight of her licking her fingers in the literally most disgusting way I've ever seen, which in fairness, she brings up, she was like, that, that's doing it for you? Gross. Then he asks her, tell me why you keep coming to the store every day. And she admits that it helps her with her writer's block. However, she won't tell him that she writes erotica. She won't say anything about that because she's had a history of people not being the best about that. So they discuss what brought him to Colorado. Apparently he was originally from Utah. Probably Utah brought him to Colorado. <laughs> 
No offense. I've never been to Utah, so I shouldn't talk shit. But when I think of Utah, I think of beautiful scenery, mount like desert mountains and Mormons. Those are the two things that come to mind. I'd rather just see the mountains once a year, but live there? Absolutely not. Utonians. Is that the word? Utah. People from Utah. Seriously. How is it? How is it? Maybe I'm wrong. What do I know? I ain't never been, so. He's in Colorado and apparently he came to Colorado to go to tech school. He went there following a girl. When she asked more about that, she realizes that she uh, hit on a bit of a sore spot and she's like, I have a douchebag ex. I know the drill, my lips are sealed. We won't talk about it, that's fine. They go back to Tire Depot where she sees him putting tires away uh, admittedly, that was kind of hot when he did it with one hand. I was like, one hand? Do you know how heavy tires are? One hand overhead? I would bite his lats, just <laughs> And this is where she got the idea to change her book from like billionaire romance to rugged, dirty, blue collar, sexy man who built his body through hard work and not going to the gym. Hotness in the most raw and rugged form. They have him sweating in slow motion. Uh, and she's like, yeah, yeah. Also, I don't know how you didn't see her. She right there. <laughs> he sees her kissing the air and he just thinks she's so quirky. I think that should have been a sign that she's probably writing something of the romance nature, but, or at least something with a romantic scene, but he finds her quirky and interesting instead of like kind of insane. He sees her again a different day and he kisses her on the cheek, something that surprises both of them. He's like, I don't, I don't know why I did that. And she's like, I mean, it's fine. I, I'm very, I'm, I'm, I'm into it. Like I'm thinking dirty thoughts. So <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you can kiss me other place. She don't say that, but that's the vibe. And so later when he's talking to his friend, his friend is like, she's down the f Man, if you don't go and hit the cheeks and call it a day. And he's like, no, nah, I don't want to do that because she's not a person that I want to do that with. One, because she comes to the shop all the time and that's just awkward. And two, you know, she's not a girl that you just hit and quit, you know? She's a girl that's in a romance movie. So she's categorically different than anybody else, I guess. While they're there, she actually comes into the bar with her friends, Lindsay and Dean. And again, Dean is that like friend that's a little flirtatious in a way. So he's like kissing her on the cheek and being all huggy and stuff. So this immediately makes Miles jealous. But considering they're not a thing or anything. They're just friends. What's the, what's the big deal, my guy? Kate, Mercedes, Casades, whatever her name is, uh, comes over and she's like, hey, how are you guys doing? They introduce her to the friend. He gets her a drink. She's like, so what are you here for? Are you looking to pick up hot chicks on a Saturday night or whatever? She's like, if you are, my, the only person that's off limits is my friend Lindsay because she dated Dean once and that was very awkward and it took a very long time for them to get back to normal after that. He asks if Dean is one of her prospects and she says, no. <laughs> he reminds me of my brother. We're just friends, like he's, he's cool peeps, but no. But I should have a random hookup tonight. If you're looking for people, maybe I should too. And then they start to look at each other and that's when you're like, mm the vibes, whatever. She then commences to give a very long speech about why it's good to have sex with another person as opposed to uh, diddling with yourself. And girl, you don't need to write nothing, we know. About to put on flip flops just to remember what it sounds like. But it's this very detailed, like the feeling and the scent and the pressure and the softness of a woman is a big sign to him like, oh, you didn't want to tell me that you write erotica. <laughs> You definitely write erotica, that's what you do. And she's like, damn it, is it so obvious? It's like, yeah, babe, you're talking like E.L. James. <laughs> it might change the way you look at me. You're gonna think of me as some sex freak person, or you're gonna be embarrassed of me. Like you wouldn't wanna tell anyone that really matters to you what it is that I do. That's the history I've had in dating, particularly with my ex. He was incredibly embarrassed of me and what I did, even though I was very successful at it. Like you wouldn't be able to like introduce me to your grandma. And he's like, first of all, my grandma would be fine with it. Like my grandma does not give a f So he takes her out in the back of the bar. He's like, I'm about to call my grandma right now. And she's like, no, please don't do that. He was like, all right, fine. I won't call my grandma, 
but I'll call my sister. What up, sis? Uh, I got this bad bitch right here. He don't say that. But <laughs> he's like, I'm out here with this girl. She's really hot. And she writes naughty books. And she's like, your family would never accept me. And then the sister's like, we don't give a fuck. Would grandma care? She was like, no, nah, grandma, a freak. She'd be cool with it. And this is a new and revolutionary thing for a Mercedes, Kate, Subaru, Kubaru, <laughs> whatever her name is. Because again, she has a history of people really um, undermining what she does because she writes erotica. So this is very touching to her and it makes her go up to him and kiss him super passionately. And they do that very annoying like mid 2000s K drama spin camera. I fucking hated that. But then at the end of the kiss, he's like, yo, as hot as that was, we have to stop. Like I like you, but also I'm not in the space where I should be liking someone right now. And she's like, okay. Got it, sweet. And with her feelings hurt, she kind of leaves with her tail tucked between her legs. She decides to stop going to the tire depot for a bit, perhaps too hurt or embarrassed to see him. So instead she decides to buy a tire scented candle, which apparently is real. I looked it up, very real. It's very weird. Just so that she can get that like memory of the tire shop back, but it doesn't seem to be working the same way in getting her mojo. So her friends are like, just go back to the place then. If it's really that impactful on your writing, just go. Just ignore each other and act like nothing happened. It'll be fine. So she's like, okay, I'm gonna do that. And of course, who's the first person she sees? Miles. And she's like, okay, I can ignore him. But he shows up straight in her face like this, asking her how the writing's going. And she says, this is the part where she tears uh, the lovers apart so that they can bring them back together, you know, for hotter makeup sex, you know? He says that his sister wants to read her work, so she'll need the pen name. And she's like, my name is Mercedes Lee Love Letter. He's like, what's your real last name? And she's like, Smith, which is true. Her last name is Smith. And so they begin to be friends. And she's like, that's great. They spend time together. She rides his motorcycle with them. They play the best and worst song I've ever heard in film while they were uh, riding in the motorcycle. It's a banger. I don't make the rules, it just is. They spend more time together. He goes more into detail about his ex. Apparently they broke up because she cheated on him with some rich dude, well, multiple men. And because of that, he is just a very jealous and insecure guy. And she's like, from a reader standpoint, that's actually a plus you being like possessive or whatever. But from a real life standpoint, I must say, don't recommend it. <laughs> don't recommend it. He leans in to kiss her and she's like, I thought, I, I don't, I don't understand you. <laughs> He's like, honestly, I don't understand myself either. But they get interrupted before they can kiss. Eventually, she finally finishes that book and she has a the end party at her home. And at the party, Miles sees Mercedes, Kate, Kate Subishi, <laughs> hanging out with Dean, being very drunk and friendly and like goofing off. And that's when we see a little bit of that possessive energy because he's looking at Dean like, and Dean is looking at him like, too much testosterone in the room. So Miles is like, can we go somewhere and talk? So they go into the house and he sees men's shoes on the floor thinking that they're Dean's. And she's like, no, that's my roommates. And, and he's like, you have a man who's a roommate. And she was like, oh, he's gay. He's not gay. He's her ex. Uh, she does say he's away for the summer. So, which seems to quell his um, anxieties and jealousy a bit. But she's like, I mean, considering you said you just wanted to be friends, where is all this possessiveness and jealousy like coming from. You know, staying friends has been, you know, harder than I imagined it would be. He admits that he is quote, overbearing, overprotective, arrogant, and pretty much everything that he does, he does to an extreme. Who, real life, movie, whatever, cute, like, oh my God, he's jealous. Real life, run, bitch. <laughs> I bet you dollars to donuts and abusive but she gets turned on by the concept of his possessiveness don't do anything to make me jealous and she's like why and he's like because it will make me want to f you <laughs> because it'll make me want to f you so you don't ever want to look at another guy again uh, similar words better voice different person better delivery would have gave it like a six 
at best. Anyway, they f for the first time. He keeps her panties as a souvenir and says, you not getting these back. Again, is it serial killer or is it hot? I give that one an eight out of 10. That one ain't bad. <laughs> then they actually have sex. The scene is terrible. You watch that at your own discretion. I'm not doing it. And thus begins their friends with benefits situation ship because they obviously both want more from each other, but he's like, I can't do this. Cause you know, I've been hurt so many times. Eh. And she's like, I want to be the cool girl that doesn't like need a relationship who can be casual and free and not a lot. So she's like, yeah, let's keep things casual. All I need is for you to like, give me your point of view for my book coming. I write smut, but I write it from a woman's point of view. Cause that's all I have. But I would love to hear like, from the man's point of view, all the like sexy stuff. And it's just research, it's fun. So being that they're now just friends with benefits, she's like, as a friend, can you help me move my roommate's stuff into a moving pod? Cause they're moving when they get back. Kicking his ass out, great. Later, what's another car company? Kazda. <laughs> is stressed because she's trying to play it cool, but she obviously wants him more than a friend. And she tells that on the phone to that friend that they show for that one second sending pizzas to the car place um, and they don't bother introducing. Well, here now, like 45 minutes into the movie, they finally introduce her. Her name is Hannah. I thought she was the other girl. I was like, did they recast her? Did, <laughs> like, did they just sneak a different white woman in there and expect us not to notice? <laughs> She's like, you should go camping with him for research, quote unquote. Men like that out and out doors, you know, maybe he'll fall in love with you. We are forced to sit through a terrible montage of their sexts. I don't want to read anyone's sexts. I don't even like to read my own. <laughs> Inevitably cringe. She ends up having brunch with Dean. He admits that he saw Miles's truck outside the day before, like, did he spend the night? And she's like, yeah. But he seems to be asking, not in like a small talk way. It's a little invasive. He's like, so what was he doing there? And she's like, hmm? This turns into an incredibly invasive thing where he's like talking down to Miles. Like he works at an auto repair shop. I'm sure he's not very smart and I'm sure he's not this, that, and the other. And she's like, I don't wanna be friends with a person who is that judgmental. I don't like judgmental people in my life. Also, you didn't finish high school. He's like, well, I got my GED. And she's like, I don't wanna do this, goodbye. We're not friends anymore if you're gonna act this way. So she's about to leave and he's like, stop. I have feelings for you. I like you. This isn't just protection. This is jealousy. So Dean has had feelings for her a very long time, seemingly all the way back to when he was dating her friend, Lindsay, who they're all in that group together. They're all friends together. Messy. And the fact that Kate was dating her ex was the reason why he didn't say anything. Apparently it wasn't because he was dating Lindsay, her best friend. He's like, you were dating that guy. And when you stopped dating him, I didn't want to be a rebound. So he's like, you're with some dude that just wants to be with you casually, but I want all of you. I want everything. I want the good, the bad, and the ugly. He just wants you as a part-time lover. Who made that? Stevie Wonder. That was Stevie Wonder? And she's like, I'm sorry, I just don't see you that way. Like, I don't, I don't see you that way. And I'm so sorry. And he's hurt. And he's like, can you please go? Like, I need to be alone. And she's like, okay. She goes back to Miles and they have, you know, a bunch of sexual innuendo conversations about engines and orgasms. It's very stupid. But they do eventually go on that camping trip. They just spend a lot of time in the wilderness, in the trees. They talk more about his Next, this is where we find out she didn't just cheat on him, but he found out she cheated on him because she got pregnant. We don't know 100% whether or not it was on purpose or not because she was trying to get somebody for their money. She always undermined Miles for doing like blue collar work. She always wanted someone who had more money. Mercedes, Kate, whatever the hell her name is, is like, well, if you are taking care of yourself, what difference does it make? And he's like, exactly. I'm like, I'm self-sufficient. I don't ask for anything from anybody. I work hard and that's what I do. Bond more on how both both of their exes didn't accept them for who they were and thought who they were wasn't enough. They play truth or dare, they skinny dip in some nasty looking water. Again, when you got a gremlin crawling out your ass, you go face 
piece of fuck up. I would only be able to skinny dip in fresh running water and I wouldn't do it because I'd be afraid to be taken away by the tide. Anyway, they fuck some more. And at some point, Miles is looking up at her like, oh no, I'm in love. Whatever will I do? So the next morning, things are a little bit awkward. Maybe both of them can kind of tell like, oh, something shifted. We were never really friends with benefits, but this something shifted. Things are very awkward, especially because when he drives her back to her home, Dean's right there at the door. It seems that Dean is there to apologize about how things happened when he confessed to her. And she's like, I didn't know you had feelings for me, dude. If I had known that, I would have handled things much differently. Maybe I would have come around less often. Maybe I, I don't know, maybe I led you on in some way or whatever. And Dean is like, no, you didn't lead me on. You're just, I'm just attracted to you. You're magnetic. At the end of the day, I can't make you feel anything that you don't feel, which, you know, rejection hurts. You just have to be like, damn, that sucks. And it's okay for it to suck. But I will say, if you're with this dude and you care about him and you like him, you should just admit to him that you're lying about your name and you're lying about staying with your ex. I feel like you should start on a clean slate if you really care about this so much. Which maybe he's just trying to be like insinuating that she needs to be more honest, but I think it's sabotage. Mind <laughs> your business. No, he right though. But well, she shouldn't have lied in the first place, but. I ain't got to do it right now. A very like my dad's a lawyer type dude comes to the auto shop and he's yelling and bitching about like, hey, one thing, you know, how long is it supposed to take to get a car fixed around her? And Miles gets very heated about it and goes in the back and he's very upset until he sees, what am I going to call her now? Uh, Calexis. Calexis. That sounds like an antidepressant. <laughs> She's like, well, if you're in such a bad mood because of customers, maybe I can come over your place and I can see your garage, do more research. We can or whatever. She goes over his house and she sees this old car that he hasn't been able to fully refurbish. It's missing one final part and it was his grandfather's car. And before his grandfather died, he promised him that he would fix it and get it running. And he's kind of bummed that he's not been able to do it yet because he can't find a carburetor. I don't know cars. I don't know what they, vroom vroom. I don't. He says something along the lines of like, my grandfather would have really liked you. And they end up f***ing in the car. And she's like, here, let's not do this for research. Let's not do this with thinking. Let's just be here, you and me. Shit like that'll happen. And he'd be like, well, I didn't, I don't want nothing serious. And after such arguably a sentimental step has been taken, she start avoiding him. And the reason she does is because her ex is back in town, who apparently the shitty uh, little dude that was belligerent at the tire shop saying like, how long do I, that dude? She's back in the house trying to get everything, kick his ass out. And during that time, she's ultimately like annoying Miles. And Miles is like, what's going on? Like, what's happening? During this time when they're not talking, Miles's friend, his family owns the car place and they just sold it so that in some way, the friend now has more control. We can own this together. Like we can make so much more money that will make us so much more financially stable. You can have a vintage car dealership and like show things off, like stuff like that. But he's too focused on her not answering his texts. So she's finally gotten the ex out of the house and she's like, oh, I'm ready. I'm free. I'm so excited to tell Miles everything so that we can just start on a clean slate. But this is a movie, so that's not gonna happen. They're at a bar. The friend goes up to get them more drinks and here comes the ex and the ex comes up to Kate and he's being all gross and sexual and she's like, stop, get away from me, you f***ing weirdo. And while that's happening, the friend Lindsay is talking to Miles and she's like, oh my God, you're here, why are you here? And he's like, oh yeah, I'm here with my friend. Like, where, where who are you up to? She was like, oh, I'm here with Kate. Mind you, he know her as Mercedes. So he's like, who is Kate? And she's like, Oh, so he ends up going over to where Kate Sadie's is. She sees him there with the ex who was also the customer that was getting loud and belligerent. He was like, that's you, ain't it? He's like, Mercedes, who is this? And he was like, her name ain't no damn Mercedes. Her name is Kate. And she's like, I meant to tell you, I was gonna tell you. And the ex is all messy and he get punched in the face. Who even are you, Kate Sadie's? <laughs> I'm no different. I just had to hide parts of myself because my ex made me feel ashamed of Mercedes, ashamed of who she is. But I never had to hide when I was with you. I could just be who I am. I'm Kate and Mercedes. And he was like, you know how much I've been lied to. Why would you lie to me like that? How can I even trust you? They both end up admitting like, I never liked you as just a friends with benefits thing. He was like, I was in love with you. But I don't even know now. I like, I don't know if I can trust you. And they like, 
not break up, break up, you know. So two weeks pass and he's still very upset and he's ignoring her and she's like, I don't know what to do. And her friends are like, you need to do a big gesture. So they go out on a road trip in the middle of the woods to find the one man that is selling that very old carburetor, car carburetor. Meanwhile, Miles' sister is giving him the whole, give her another chance. I've never heard you be so happy. Like you are never that happy with your ex. Come on, she made a mistake, blah, blah, blah. You know, whatever. She come to the shop, she drop off the carburetor. <laughs> I don't know why it's so hard to say that carburetor and the dude is like give this to him yourself she's like no i don't want to get him back like this y'all on the same page just please but eventually he convinces her to go back there miles is like what is that she's like it's a carburetor for that 1969 old ass car that you got she's like i'm not a cool girl who can just have casual relationships i'm kate who's in love with a man who works at tire depot uh, and they kiss and you know, whatever. He's now her real boyfriend, not just her book boyfriend. And she eventually does finish the book, The Mechanic, and they live happily ever after. Yay. It's a movie I watched, so that's what, <laughs> like, that's, that's it. It was a bit of a palate cleanser. I almost forgot about last week. Anyway, so if you like this video, feel free to like this video. Follow me on all my social media, Instagram, whatever the f they're calling Twitter these days. If you have other movies you think I should watch for this here series, feel free to put those down in the comment section or at me anywhere on social media. I'll remember to plug that I make music sometimes because that is what I called my fictitious music company. I make music company. <laughs> I have an album called Songs She'd Like to Hear. Listen to it. Thank you. Bye.